Hi there, Skinny Vinstani, CEO of OneWire. Welcome to Open Door. Today we're going to go interview Tom Murphy, who is the co-founder of Crestview, a private equity firm with a contrarian orientation focused on the middle market. What does that mean? You'll find out. Let's go see what he's up to. Tom, can't thank you enough for having me over here today. Would love to hear about your roots and where you grew up. Uh, from New York, uh, was raised uh, outside of uh, New York in a little town called Rye, New York. Uh, went to school, uh, Princeton, and then Harvard. And then when I left Harvard, came to New York, went to work at Goldman Sachs, uh, where I was for almost 18 years, and uh, took about a year off after Goldman, and then started Crestview Partners in 2004. Got ya. Um, and why finance? I mean, when you were in college, were you thinking in high school you wanted to get into finance? What inspired you to make that move? Uh, when I was in the summers in college, I caddied uh, to make a little extra money. Uh, one of the guys I caddied for worked at EF Hutton. When I was getting out of school, I bumped into him and he said, you should come see us. And I had good sales skills, people skills, and was good with math. And they got me involved uh, in, uh, in their you know, municipal bond business. And it just sort of snowballed from there. That's how my career started. I didn't have any knowledge at all skating. Before I started, I was just, you know, 21. and you know, ready to work hard and ready to learn, but I didn't I didn't bring very much to the table. And you ended up at Goldman Sachs, premier investment bank. Um, what was it like being there? I probably got four or five years of tutorial in the first two or three years I was there. I started in the mergers business, uh, right. and we were very busy uh, and probably worked, you know, 80 to 90 hours a week for the first four or five, you know, three or four years of my career. Okay, and then you were in the M&A area, uh, and then you went I know you were doing some private equity deals as well at, at, at Goldman. Um, and what led you to that change? Uh, when I left the M&A business, I was responsible for a while for a business down in the southeast, uh, which was not a core market for Goldman Sachs, and the companies were small. So one of the things I thought was an interesting opportunity was to talk to these people, particularly the families who own the companies, about how to handle transitions from one generation to the next generation or how to help them grow their business. And those led to 12 uh, different uh, direct investments in those companies. And eventually I decided it was a very fun way to make a living uh, mm -hmm. and get involved in the ownership of the company. And it seemed like an area where I had some aptitude. The CEOs liked me, the finance guys liked me. I seemed to talk their language a little more comfortably than the average guy on Wall Street. Uh, and uh, I was comfortable making the management teams out to be the star. Uh, rather than making the Wall Street people out to be the star. And I think most people like to be the star. Right. And in terms of, um, you had a great run at Goldman, no question about it, and it's a great firm. And then you decided to head out on your own and start up Crestview. Um, what inspired you to make that decision? Uh, often it's uh, opportunity uh, and circumstance just sort of uh, find you. Uh, I'd left Goldman. Uh, unfortunately, in there, I'd gotten cancer, so I spent about six, eight months getting over that. And I was sitting at my kitchen table, and my good friend Barry Volpert, who was my classmate at Harvard and my colleague at Goldman uh, for many years, uh, came in to visit and said he wanted to start a private equity firm, and did I want to do it with him? And I'd lost 50 pounds. I had about 250 stitches in my neck from a surgery I'd just gotten out of. And I said, you know, guy, I'm a little busy right now. I'm trying to get it healthy. Uh, and he says, well, you're going to get better, and, and once you get better, you're going to want to get back to work because retirement almost killed you, so let's get, let, let's get back after it. And tell us a little bit about uh, Crestview in terms of what your philosophy is, how you differentiate yourself from everybody else out there. I think our pitch would be, in, in a simple form, is uh, we're a very senior team. We're focused on troubled, out of favor dislocated companies. We, we actually move towards the blast zone rather than running away from it. Uh, we've got a manageable pool of capital. Uh, our first fund was a billion and a half and our second fund was two and a half, but $250 million, of the, uh, $250 million of the capital we're managing is the partner's capital. So we are big investors right there with our, with our LPs. And we've got four industries to pay attention to, energy, healthcare, uh, media and financial services. Uh, so 99.99% .99 of the stuff we do are in those industries and suffering from some form of dislocation. And we get involved trying to solve problems. You know, the owner's got a tax problem, the, the, the company's got a finance problem, they've got a tax problem, they've got a bankruptcy issue, they're over-levered, they don't have access to international distribution, they don't have access 
uh, to capital. These are all things that we can help these companies with and help grow their business. Mm -hmm. And it's so far uh, so good it's been able to work for, uh, for us. Is private equity is exciting as as much fun today as it was 10 years ago? I think the world's still a big place, Skitty. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, the business used to be just in the U.S., just in New York, just a manufacturing business, and it's really grown. It's an international business. I think the ability to add value as an owner to a business in a private setting is still a very compelling conversation for a lot of managers. All sorts of people want to do things with their company, but they can't because of their ownership structure. They can't because of the incentive structures. They can't because they can't get access to capital because they got to meet quarterly returns. And I think if you can do things privately, uh, often you've uh, allowed the management team uh, to, to pursue different strategies or, or, or this right strategy for the business. And so it's still it's still a pretty good business. We've had no trouble hiring people into the company who are into the firm who are smart, good guys, good women, uh, who have uh, lots of options available to them, and they think, "Geez, this will be an interesting way to uh, run my career." When you look to hire somebody, and you're looking at all the analysts to come here and all the associates to come here, you guys see great talent. Uh, what is it that makes somebody irresistible that? Tom Murphy says, you know, we got to hire that person. It's yeah. almost impossible to walk into a room and impress everybody so singularly with analysis, insight, math, tech, you know, technical analysis. You can walk into a room and impress people that you are a good guy, mm -hmm. that you are a, a normal guy, that you are a smart guy who can communicate complicated ideas in a simple way, mm -hmm. that you are someone who's focused on them, not yourself. Some people show up and they try to help. Yeah. Uh, and I think if you can run your life that way, you'll find that the world works pretty hard for you uh, right. and works out pretty well. And you gotta be smart, you gotta be a good guy. You know, these are all things you have to be. And I think if you can get so you focus on other people and their problems, then life works out a little easier for you. Tom Murphy, president, co-founder of Crestview. Can't thank you enough for having me over today. Really appreciate it. It's getting my pleasure.